you, you what you about to do at your next tour but because you're performing at the venue i saw chris at last which wow. blew my mind you know and i know you in the thick of it yeah but that should and if it doesn't blow your mind i get it but outside looking in i'm like when i, I looked at your tour dates yesterday and i'm like he's performing at the straw center in tampa like i saw chris rock there three years ago when he was doing his total blackout tour like that's a huge fucking venue oh, to, wow. be, to be doing and i'm like hassan it lets you know that it's possible it lets you know if you put in the work and you're talented and you're a good person you could get that you know what i'm saying um but while I, while I was having uh, dinner, because we went out to dinner with him afterwards, after the show. Yeah. And at the end of the dinner, I told Chris, I said, hey, man, I just want to thank you for allowing me and my wife to, you know, come here and, and, and have dinner with you. And he was like, come on, man. He's like, man, Eddie used to let me stick around, you know. <laughs> but he was just referring to, like, you a young comic. Eddie used Eddie Murphy used to let me tag along. So yeah, man, you know, I'm gonna show love to you. And I thought that that, that spoke volumes, you know, of, of his character and humility and, and how good of a person he is. Um, I wanna talk about Homecoming King yeah. and Patriot, and not Patriot, I wanna talk about Homecoming King and the, the King's Jester, the your new. Yeah. And when did they decide Netflix, or did you shoot it first? I don't know what happened. Sure. How did you get the special? Like, what what moments led up to you getting that? Yeah, bro. So, so I'll tell you. I'll tell you something. So, um, and this 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 could be. This is a great conversation, and, and I'm so glad. Like, because because we know each other for years, I can, I can have it with you. You know, um, you ever feel this as an artist? Like, there's stuff that you're doing. Like, you're shooting MacGyver, right? And every day, you you know, you got to shoot it in Atlanta, right? So you're right. Like, living in Atlanta. And you got your apartment, you're going through the rigmarole, right? Like, oh, here, Justin, here's your coffee, here's your blah, blah, blah. You go to your breakfast spot. You're in, you're in kind of the, the doldrums of your day-to-day -day life, right? But then there's, there's just this notebook that you have on the side, and it's just filled with all these ideas, whether it was rap, whether, whatever it is. It's poetry, a script. It's this thing that's pouring out of you, right? And so I remember, you know, I'm getting up. This is in 2010, 2011. I'm still in L.A., I'm getting up at the improv, I'm getting up at the ha ha, I'm getting up, you know, at, at Marty's Laugh Factory. I'm auditioning for Montreal. And I and I keep seeing I'm like, you know, there's these pure stand-ups, like just the pure raw, like they go from joke to joke to joke, seven minute set, and they're crushing. And I'm all right, I'm cool. Like I'm it's not that I'm bad, it's not that I'm bombing, but there's a difference, bro, between like a Ferrari and a three series. You know what I'm saying? Just that, that engine runs different. You know, and the three series is nice and it's, it's, it's cool, whatever, right? But, but, but my engine couldn't rev like that. Like I couldn't crush as like the way some of these guys and my contemporaries were, or doing, they were doing new innovative things in the stand-up space that way. So I started doing these like storytelling shows, which like a lot of comedians weren't hanging out at, but people like Mike Birbiglia, Colin Quinn, they had pivoted. I started hearing them on NPR. They, they were doing these like longer like stories, right? And I started going to the Moth Story Slam and these other places. And bro, then I was crushing. Like I was crushing in a way nobody else was crushing. Because the, st the, pure, the pure storytellers on, in theater, they're just telling these like long sob stories, but they're not tagging it. They're not having asides. You know, they're not building the roller coaster. You know what I'm saying? So I remember in 2011, 2012, I started telling the early stories from Homecoming King, which become Homecoming King. And I had this killer story about my prom experience. Anyways, that was an important moment for me where a lot of my friends that were around me were telling me, they're like, bro, you, you have a gift for this. And, and um, you know, shout out to Steve Harvey. Steve said this, like, you know, when people, people say follow your passions, they're actually wrong. You should follow your gift. Mm. My whole journey in life is figuring out what are my gifts? What are the things that God gave me? So I'm passionate about basketball, bro. But if you've seen me in the celebrity game, I'm not very good. I'm very passionate, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm super, like, I'm, I'm very passionate. When you talk about celebrityness, yeah. that's when I knew you crossed over. Oh, the celebrity. When, yeah. I, saw the, when I saw you in the NBA All-Star Celebrity, I said, this motherfucker's out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So I'm passionate about basketball, bro, but that, that ain't it. I'm passionate about a lot of different music, hip hop. Yeah, great, bro, but you should not be doing that. Right. Gifted. Your gift, you know, and Steve was describing this, was something that you naturally do that you don't really have to try that hard at. And that second part of that sentence was everything. I'm like, we all have that thing. We all have that friend that was really good at calculus, didn't even study for the test. We all have that friend that was like, yo, she can sing. Bro, she's hung over from the night before and she can st st still sing better than any of you girls. We all have that friend that's like, yo, he can eat a whole large pizza the day before. He lifts up his shirt, he's got an eight pack. His metabolism is his gift. He's not even trying, right? Now, if you put work on top of that gift, you're out of this world. You're like, yes. you're, you're actually one of one. You're Adele, you're a superstar. You're LeBron. Yeah, you're LeBron. You're just, a... bro, I've seen LeBron. His shoulders are like here. Mav's shoulders are here. You know what I'm saying? He's, al he's already built like a tank. That's from God. Right. Now, you put work on top of that. That's already his gift. Now he's, at, he's one of one, right? Straight up. And so I was thinking about this. I was like, bro, I'm smoking people at these storytelling shows the separation between number one and two is vast what if i really doubled and tripled down so i took the show when i when i finally got to new york i was like i'm gonna take the show off broadway everybody on broadway wait a minute is this wait a minute is this during the daily show you're doing this okay yeah. so this is my thing i'm just like again once again you know i'm on the daily show and i'm starting to figure out what's my gift like and I realized I'm part of an ensemble cast. There's five correspondents. You know, I'm going to be on the show a few times, uh, maybe a couple times a week, maybe several times a month, right? Uh, when John needs me to come in and hit something out of the park, right? I'm going to go shoot field pieces. But with all this extra time, I want to build myself in New York. And so I started going to the cellar. And then I started building up this off-Broadway show at Cherry Lane Theater. Um, you know, I, Comedy Central had passed on my, you know, I wanted to do a half hour. They had passed asked everybody kind of passed so I, I took some money and, and again I got to give a shout out to my wife because when you're married that's that's your joint bank account and we took twenty seven thousand dollars out of that bank account and we put up the first uh you know kind of rent production payment for the theater and then we took out another twenty twenty four twenty five thousand dollars to shoot like a mini special and bro that was like that was all the money we you know and you know how much comedy central these places pay like it was that plus some of my extra savings. Um, and we shot this like mini proof of concept and I put it up on Vimeo and then I shopped it around as it, in real time as the show was selling out in New York. So I could, I could feel a buzz building. And then I was like, as soon as the buzz, buzz builds, be ready, shop this around, you know? And shout out to Kristen Zollner at Netflix I ended up showing her the proof of concept of act two of the show and she bought it. She was like, yeah, I really like this. Wow. And, yeah, bro. And so that was like the second time in my like life where again, just I built the whole ship and then, you know, they believed and, and, and in the proof of concept I showed, um, I did like 3d rendering so I could show how, like if I was standing on stage, the graphics would come in front of me behind me. Like you see that in homecoming King. So Zollner could see like, oh, I see the direction. I see the vision of what he's trying to do. But she could press play on it, you know? And so that was the, that was the power of, you know, someone believing you internally, in, in you internally, and showing them, not telling them, showing them what it could be. Um, and then third, just having like a supportive wife, bro. Like that wouldn't have been possible without her. Um, and so that was it. That it ended up getting sold. And then I knew okay, if I get this shot, I get a Netflix special. I know the reach these things have. All right, I'm going to swing for the fences. Like I'm going to, you know, work with the best lighting designers, the best stage designers. And it's funny, there were some other comics that were like, bro, comedy specials aren't supposed to look like this. It's not supposed to be you in front of like CNN screens. And it was that same thing. I'm like, I know, but I'm not you. Like I'm not Justin. I'm not Tiffany. Like I don't have what they have. I have this other thing that's in me. So I want to show the world that thing. You know, and, and it man, really you shot. It, it was really, it really great. Yeah, it really clicked. That was that was probably my favorite special that year. I I don't remember what other specials came out that year, but I remember seeing that, thinking this it's a classic. It's a classic. You created a classic, which is so hard yeah. for a comedian to do. 
even if it's a one man show, even like I don't know, like John Leguizamo has created a classic with Freak, Whoopi yeah. Goldberg created a classic. Like there's a very uh, few caliber of like talent comedians that created like a one man show classic. But you you did that, man. Man, when you did these off Broadway shows, because this is something that I always thought was very impressive by you. How many people was coming out to these shows originally? Because you always, for me, outside, again, this is outside looking in, it's like, I felt like you skipped the club shows. Like most comedians, if you don't know, you do open mics, you start featuring for somebody, you start headlining, now you're headlining clubs, and then when you get big enough, you go to the theaters, like the bigger, <laughs> and then you fucking hit the arenas. But I don't remember you headlining clubs. Yeah, it, it, it was one of those things where uh, the the clubs that I was getting offers at, like, were, like, the C clubs, like, you know, like, way off the beaten path in Spokane, Washington, and I had done a couple of them, and I remember thinking to myself, I was like, you know, no disrespect, but I saw the audience, I saw the people that were coming out, I saw that they had just papered a lot of the room, and I was like, bro, I could, I could spend a decade of my life here, there's no way I'm going to build a real substantial fan base this way the you know shout out to the other comics that can there's other comics that really built it that way but it takes know? years for them to build it that way like 20 years for them yeah. to build it like that yeah but it's i'm like this isn't going to work for me for my skill set so i what i did and it's funny that you say that like maybe the perception from the outside was like bro like my man got a show going off broadway this is crazy but i was just dealing with in my head bro you're 30 grand in debt you got to make sure that you recoup. So it, it started. No, I ain't no Jay-Z, but you still get a J. Shooting at niggas like that nigga Clay. Invested in myself and doubled up my pay. 